Well, this morning we're going to look at the first few verses in Proverbs chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. Uh, but there was an old chorus that came to my mind as I was meditating on this passage. And um, it's, it's, it's from Jesus' words when the Sermon on the Mount, he says, Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. And we're reminded that daily that our first priority needs to be to seek God. We are citizens of another kingdom, uh, citizens of, of the kingdom of God. And so it would fit, be fitting that we would always want to look to the king of that country, if you will, that kingdom, uh, Jesus, and follow after him and seek first what his will and his desire is for our life. And so let's sing this together. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Father, we seek you first thing this morning, Lord, and God, we love you. We thank you so much for your goodness and your grace to us, God. We thank you for your uh, for your word that you have given to us that we might know you, and God, in your word, we, we come to know ourselves better in relation to you, God, and Lord, we thank you that you've given us the Holy Spirit, and Lord, he abides in each and every one of us, God, and Lord, you tell us that the Holy Spirit is the one who leads us into all truth. And so we invite the Holy Spirit this morning, God, to, um, to use the words that were written ages ago, inspired by the Holy Spirit through Solomon. God, that we would not only be hearers of the word, but God, doers of the word. And so, Lord, open our hearts. Speak to each and every one of us individually through your word. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Proverbs chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. Let me just read the first five verses, and, and then we're going to come back, and I want to just make some comments on those. Um, it begins by writing, it says, My son, 
if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding. Yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as if it were hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Now, this is a precept that he gives. And the precept that he, that he gives here is that there is an, an intentionality or there is, uh, we, we proactively seek for and ask God for wisdom and insight and understanding. And yes, God, uh, God is always active uh, in, in the heart of the believer, bearing witness in our heart of his truths and, and his precepts. But there is a responsibility on our part, and that is to seek that. I'm reminded you again of the song we just sang, that Jesus said, if you seek first the kingdom of God, then all these things will be added unto you. And so there is that initiating part. Now, it, it's very true that, that until we were born again, the Bible says that no one seeks after God. We didn't seek God. God drew us to himself and he saved us apart from the work of the Holy Spirit of God not a single one of us would be saved and in relationship to God today but now that we have the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit bears on our heart and we really have a choice and that is when the Holy Spirit's bearing on our heart to and drawing us in fellowship with God drawing us to the Word of God we have a choice to either shut that down and ignore that or initiate intentionally seek after God and so he calls us in this in verse 1 my son if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you and here here the image is is the best illustration I can I can use is a receiver on a football team if the football team if the football is thrown to that receiver that receiver can either take and receive that ball and bring it unto himself, or he can choose not to hold it. So here, the illustration is that if we receive the Word of God, not just being a hearer of the Word of God, as James says, but, but being a doer. And so in order to do, you have to receive that. Take it unto yourself. And so his promise is, he says here, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom, and inclining your heart to understanding, making your ear attentive. I've heard from my wife a number of times uh, when she says something to me and I just respond in a yes or nod my head and she says, you're not, you're not hearing what I've said. And I say, yeah, I'm listening. And she may say, you're listening, but you're not hearing. <laughs> you understand that, right? Uh, so there's a difference in listening and hearing. hearing. Hearing leads to understanding. Hearing leads to application. Isaiah the prophet said this in Isaiah chapter 42, verse 20, as God was giving him what he was to say to the nation, that he was to tell them, you, you have seen many things, but you do not observe them. You've seen them, but you don't observe them. Your ears are open, but you do not hear. And so uh, we're to be not only knowing the precepts of God, listening to, but, but hearing the precepts of God. You all know the difference there. And so that's what he's calling us to, that, that we incline our heart to understanding. And it's through that attentive ear, he says, that attentive ear to wisdom, the instruction, and, and the implementation, the acting out the word of God, uh, there comes understanding. If you incline your heart, there, there's that, that thing of I'm raising up my heart to hear and receive God's word. He says, yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding. And so here it is, just a double phrase that he's, re, that he's emphasizing again what he's just said. And so if we bottom line that, for us, the application is that that we've got to not only know God's word, we've got to hear him in his word. We've got to be attentive to it. We've got to incline our hearts to it, to want 
to, to have a desire uh, to have that word effectually change and mold and shape our lives with the Holy Spirit involved in that. He says that if you seek it, verse 4, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasure. I'm reminded of the parables that Jesus gave referring to the kingdom of God. It's, it's like a man who has who has purchased a field with his own money and he's taken that treasure out and he's buried that treasure in the field or a pearl of great worth that 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 the wisdom of God, the precepts of God are so precious. They're like silver. And, and, and we've got to mine that mine. We've got to dig in that mine to gain those hidden treasures. I, I know I encourage people all the time to, to study, to know the Word of God. And would I, can I tell you, especially in the times that we're in right now, that, that we have to embrace and hold to the Word of God. There is no hope that we can see if all of our vision, if all of our insight is based on what we are hearing in the news media, media reading on social media, etc. Folks, the Word of God is the only thing that is truth, and that's where we need to be, especially in these times, is in the Word of God. Um, I, 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 I caught myself yesterday just kind of perusing through some of the social media things and, and, and reading what people were posting, and my immediate response wanted to... to and then I said, it's like, wait a minute wait a minute, that's not truth, and I don't need to respond to it. I don't need to react to it. And so I went to Romans chapter 13 and chapter 14 and read there what Paul's instructions were to the believers in times that were far worse than the days that we're living in today. So I encourage you uh, to let the Word of God saturate your heart and your mind in response to the things that are happening in our world today. And so maybe go to Romans chapter 13, I think it's in that area, and, and just meditate and chew on. But he says here, we have to seek it, we have to search for it. It's like hidden treasure. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find knowledge of God. And so that's where the fear of God is, the reverence of God, the awe of God is is reflecting in his precepts and the truths that come to his word. That's what builds our fear of God, our reverence of God. He says, then you'll gain understanding. And so I want to encourage you this morning. Again, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these things, Jesus said, will be added unto you. Would you pray with me this morning that God would give us an opportunity to plant a seed in somebody's heart, a seed of the Word of God, that in that soil that the Holy Spirit would work with that Word that's planted in their heart and would grow it, and, and that God would give us an opportunity with somebody that we've come across uh, in our path today that we might be able to cultivate a seed that's already been planted there or if God would grace us to be a part of seeing someone come to know Christ. Oh, that he would do that. Um, I'm looking forward to Sunday morning. We have two adults that, that have just uh, committed their life to Christ who are following in believers' baptism. Uh, somewhere along the way, somebody had planted a seed. That seed had been cultivated, and God, by the Holy Spirit, drew them to know him. And so we were just glad to be a part of seeing them commit their lives to Christ and now they're following a believer's baptism. So let's pray. Would you pray with me? Father, we pray that God, our first inclination in our heart would be to seek you, God, to seek your kingdom and Lord, to know you through your word. Father, would you drown out the noise of the world and God, would your truth resonate through in our hearts and our minds Father, give us an opportunity today, God, whether it be at the grocery store, whether it be at work, whether it be a person that comes to do service at our house, God, whatever it might be, that, Lord, you'd use us to plant a seed in somebody's heart today, God. God, that you would use us to maybe cultivate 
seeds that have already been planted. And God, that you would use us if you'd so grace us uh, to be a part of seeing somebody come to know Christ. Lord, we love you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Every one of you have your story, how God brought you to him. If you don't know what to plant in somebody's heart, just share with them how God drew you to him. You don't have to have all the answers, uh, but you know what God did in your life, and that's your testimony. And share that with somebody. I love you. I pray God's blessings on you. Have a great day today.